You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because- That look good. I got big energy every day. Let's go! And he is dicked. Blind squirrel finds a knife every once in a while. That's right. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Well, come on, Herbert. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddies, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Hey, guys. Hey, and Kyle the Coach Duggan. Kevin's coming home. Kevin's He's coming, coming, coming home. home. Kevin's yeah, coming Hercules, home. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> oh, Dude, man. I'm so ready. I've been out here in Europe for 48 days, and like, I am so ready to get back to the U.S. Every There's a lot of football going on out here. And everyone's like, are you going to watch the football game? And I'm like, yeah, Long we have football. football. Yeah, let's do it. And like, oh, you sons of bitches. You, you're talking your about soccer. You're talking less soccer. Get yeah. out of my <laughs> face. <laughs> so I'm ready to get home. You have <laughs> some good uh, Chief Smack talk built up. You haven't had an opportunity to express yourself to Chief fans. Recently. <laughs> well, dude, the, no, the problem is I work, I work oh, with two of them. So I'm dealing, but it's been nice to kind of rub like in the kind of oozy Frank whatever his name was oh yeah you know, having an uzi in his car stuff so. yeah what a yeah. what a that's been cluster nice. F. Yeah. yeah that's that's <laughs> it's, that's crazy i, I so I'm, I'm good on my charger yeah the chief smackdown good. i've been practicing i'm actually more refined now than i've been in a while <laughs> all right well that's good because i i was worried that there might be like an old lady wearing some chief gear that you're just gonna unload on and yeah, she's like, just gonna be like <laughs> dead on the floor oh, just no. from you just unleashing everything at once yeah oh, a lot of it, hurts. <laughs> yeah. it hurts so bad oh. <laughs> all right folks well hey let's get to the episode shall we there's uh plenty to talk about this week uh we've got another coach's classroom lineup for you another great bolt insight uh but first and foremost we want to talk about uh, what's been going on in charger news and Keenan Allen just had this drop recently, uh, a release. Uh, he's doing a YouTube series called The Off Season, uh, July 16th. Uh, is that Which today? Which is today. That's, That's today. today. Oh, my God. Yep. Um, so it's dropping today, folks. Check it out. YouTube, The Off Season. Man, I, <laughs> every so Charger, much content. Yeah, every I Charger it. now is getting so their cool. own, like... Gaming channel, YouTube channel, yeah. sponsorship, Instagram stories. Like, they're just, everybody's got their own content now. And, I mean, good for Keenan Allen, man. Like, he's yeah. one of the main names I'm, on the team, so might as well. You know, gonna, every, you know, know every single Charger fan is going to go watch that, and he's getting paid on every one of, of those views. So of course. It's genius, dude. And it's awesome. <laughs> Interaction with fans will be in the comments. Yes. It's going to be it's gonna be awesome. Dude, just like a handful of years ago, the best you could get were like the post-game pressers. Like right. And they just lied audio. the whole time. Yeah. 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 You knew you, what they were going to say. and He's literally, he has somebody following him with the camera during the whole yeah. offseason. Like, this is insane. Like, I'm going to, I want to give credit. I think a little bit has to go to Eck because Eck kind of went Opened guns the hot yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Eck definitely, it felt like, at least as far as the team goes, Eck definitely paved the way. Um, Mike Williams following shortly after that, and yeah, the, the, no, and Kenneth, <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth Murray had one. That's how we oh, found right. out about yeah. his shoulder. Right, like, I love this dude. You just gotta f find them and subscribe to them, and then you get all this, and awesome then you get all free this content. free content. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so free. Rad. That's what's so great about it. Is like you're not paying for HBO Max to watch Hard Knocks. You're right. getting this stuff for free. They're giving it to you, so yeah. take it for Pete's sake. Take also, it. didn't the, the the Hard Knocks team get announced here recently? Yeah, the Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah, the Cowboys. Yeah, Stupid what? A, yeah, who cares? <laughs> it's so overdone. Like we get every three or four years, we get the Cowboys. How, how effed up is it though that we get Brandon Staley and we all want to see what he's like at practice? I like know. This, and we don't get that season. We get the last Anthony Lynn season. <laughs> and Although just like, that was uh, that was pretty sweet. The Anthony Lynn season, he was good. Like on the show, they put him in a really good light, especially in comparing him. Um, to, to the Rams Rose. guy, yeah. right? Man, he looked good. We were pumped about Anthony Lynn after the end of it. Oh, absolutely! The but it sucked. They didn't give us very much uh, Justin at all because he was a backup right. at that yeah. point. So yeah. I think the one thing I remember is some guy telling him how much he loved his balls. One, two. Yeah. The the, the one. other one was yeah one, <laughs> and then the other one is when he does like this fade away kind of like paper. Right. He throws a water yes. paper into a trash yes. can. And he looks at the camera's like the office style. 
Like that's yeah. all we got of Justin <laughs> yeah. Herbert. Imagine this, if we had it obvi- this yeah, year. Yeah, obviously this season is so much more going into this year and yeah. so much more expectation. We went into last year like, oh, we got Tyrod Taylor as a quarterback. Maybe we'll be okay 500. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. that was the expectation. It would have been a whole different ball game going into this season. Big time. Well, we're going into this season with a lot of unknowns, and we just right. want to know. We want some inkling. We want some idea yeah. of what's happening. And Hard Knocks absolutely would have been at least a little bit more insight into something like that. But now, I mean, Chargers Nobody, need their own Hard Knocks. They don't need to be sharing right. screen time with Sean McVay Rose. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't need suck, that. Dude. Like, I we, suck, we need dude. our that's own. So, BS. I mean, Good for the Cowboys, I guess. Whatever. Um, I don't think y'all. any teams ever won the Super Bowl when they were on Hard Knocks, though. So good riddance. Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to take or a look. Very rarely make the playoffs. There's always some yeah. bullshit drama with yeah. them after <laughs> after their season. So good. Okay. Even yeah. though the Rams didn't make the playoffs. Whatever. My, my math whatever. shakes out in my head. <laughs> well, 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 whatever. <laughs> we're not on it. Screw them. No, of course yeah. not. Whatever. Okay. And another bit of news here. Chargers are hiring a new... Team analyst Alex Stern. Have you guys? This is exciting kind of news. Like, it's crazy. I, I'm pumped on this. Yeah. Well, it, I I saw somebody make a comment that like the Chargers were one of the last teams to get an analyst. Is that right? That's what I've heard. Oh my god! Yeah, know, it's, <laughs> money Moneyball came out like 42 years ago, and we still didn't have <laughs> any analytics whatsoever. <laughs> It's like, come on, guys. If Brad Pitt taught game. us anything, right. you need yeah. an analytics guy. You need a Jonah yeah. Hill. You, you need, need a Jonah, Jonah Hill. Hill. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, we got our Jonah Hill. His name is Alex Stern. Chargers are hiring Alex Stern to be the team analyst. Stern took part in the NFL's Big Data Bowl in 2020, which is described by event's official site as an annual sports analytics contest that challenges members uh, of the analytics community from college students to professionals uh, to contribute to the NFL's evolution of the use of advanced analytics. I had no idea this was a thing. I had zero idea this was a thing. I still don't get it. Like, I don't, like, I know, okay, analytics, when to call a timeout, when to go for it on fourth down. Like, those are the ones that we're told about a lot. Yeah. But there's so much more that just in reading this little article, like, like it's like when to use like personnels and different plays and all this cr- and like practice. Like contract and, worthiness yeah, of play yeah. potential. It's nuts. It's like we were just in the dark before we uh, apparently hired this guy because we were just guessing. Well, it's the lights are out. Am I right? <laughs> Ooh, a callback, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it's weird to me that the that the Chargers didn't have it, but yeah. if that was the one thing that we weren't that we didn't have, and it's like, well, I guess that kind of makes sense based on the way that we fumble rooskied some of those seasons. Um, yeah. Let's see, Matt Edwards, who serves on the University of Virginia's football staff as the director of analytics, said Stern has been a huge asset. Alex has a very bright mind that helps him think logically, I like that, uh, and look for innovative ways to utilize data, Edward says. He has all the tools. Well, yeah. that's, yeah, we did. <laughs> Sign me up. Give, me, give me an analytics guy that's got tools. I don't want a there's toolless a, analytics guy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, there's a pinch of a nerd alert, nerd. but I will take it. Dude, all of it. Yeah. All day long. Make the team better. Whatever can make Please. the team better. Yeah, I'm bring all, all the nerds. I don't yeah, know. That's awesome. all of them. Yeah. I love it. Call, I love change them. the name. You know, Los Angeles nerds. I'm all about it. Like, I don't care. <laughs> do what you got to do. Just help uh, us call timeouts. Yeah, yeah. please. Please. Please uh, help us call timeouts. <laughs> Stern competed in the Big Data Bowl, a National Football League sponsored analytics competition for students that was held just before February's draft combine. Uh, from a data set, Stern wrote an algorithm that calculated exactly how much space each individual offensive lineman was creating for the running back on each play. The <laughs> algorithm standardized their grades, taking specific situations into account. How? What does it even mean? I feel like I feel like, I, I, I feel like this was probably something like it was just presented to Coach Lynn. He's like. Uh, no, this is false. <laughs> like, this is fake. There's no fucking way this really works. I'm out. Do you remember him trying to use the megaphone on yeah, Hard Knocks? Yeah, yeah. That gives you an idea of where we yeah, are. Trying to present something like Lynn. this. He's like, whatever, this is fake. I'm not buying it. Fake, <laughs> yeah. fake yeah. news. Yeah. yeah. They probably had one and, and he cut him on the first day along with uh, <laughs> yeah, he's that like, tight end. You? Yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. you're no Antonio Gates. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're no Jonah Hill. <laughs> there you go. You're no you're Jonah no, Hill. Yeah. Um, 
So there was a quote from Stern, for example, just because your left tackle creates a bunch of space in front of the running back, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Maybe it was a run to the outer left. The defenders were spread out, not anticipating a run from the offense, and they were facing the worst rushing defense in the NFL. You'd expect him to create space in that situation. Makes sense. Makes sense on paper. Um, What my algorithm did was ask how much more or less space did your left tackle create in that situation than my left tackle when he faces a similar situation. Stern then gathered salary data and compared where guards, tackles, and centers ranked uh, in his grading system to how they were paid uh, at their position. He found that the average offensive lineman is either over or underpaid by about $2 million a year. Wow. wow. Hmm. That's crazy. I, I just imagine, like, the way my brain works, I don't have any insight into analytics or how to do this and formulas mm-hmm. and all that. I imagine a ruler... And you're going up to a TV and you're measuring the distance between all the players. Like every that's how I'm on that's yeah. with every play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Mister comes out, he's just got a ruler. He's like, let's yeah, go, yeah. boys. But it's like you said the the idea that like nerd alert. I the guy knows football clearly. Oh, yeah, like he's all clearly that a football stuff guy. involved. Like you, he knows football. He knows situations. He knows he and like that idea of being logical. He's not just like, oh, this guy created this much space, signed in this much. Mm-hmm. You have to know everything that's going on. So takes a, a special kind of special kind of special nerd. brain. Yeah. And I meant yeah. in, I meant nerd in an endearing way. I, I don't is, think that's yeah. a negative connotation Not at all. At all no. Cuz no. we're all nerds. I, I, I think we're football. nerds. We're yeah. nerds about different things. We're we're football yeah. nerds, about movie nerds. Yeah. 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 And then lastly, uh in a time where we have an increasingly expensive market for skilled players like quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, analytically optimizing the rest of your roster is crucial. Uh this algorithm can help you find better offensive linemen for less, allowing mm-hmm. you to spend more at other positions. Saving that it. money, baby. That's why Please. the Spanos hired him. They want to Stern's, save that green. <laughs> Stern's discount lineman. That's, That's right. That's what we're talking about. Hey, whatever gets the job done, man. I'm all about it. So Same. hopefully he's got more uh, expertise outside of the lineman area. Because, I mean, if he's got some, if he dabbles in special teams, we could certainly use some uh, analytics in that department as well. Um, but great, 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 great addition to the team. I hope he's, uh, hope he makes, makes the team yes, photo, uh, when they, <laughs> when they're the out on the photo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and and what, did, what did coach call it in athletic leisure? Oh, um, the, what the is style it? of, of a- like, something competitive, competitive, uh, athletic, competitive, business, competitive. No, Sorry, yeah. I don't know. Damn, Damn it. Fuck. Okay. All right. All right. Well, our comments are going to blow up now. If yeah. he's in the team photo, I say they give him a jersey and it's 01010101. No, it'll just be the sign for pie. There um, you go. That works too. That's his number. <laughs> That's his number. Ones and zeros. Love it. All right. Well, folks, now it's time to go over to uh, another great interview that, uh, speaking of analytics, I think Ooh. we've got one coming up here in our bold heavy, insight. Heavy, heavy episode on analytics. I love yeah, it. I hope everybody gets your pocket protectors, your nerd glasses, and uh, and curl up those pant legs. It's time for a bolt <laughs> insight interview. Let's go to it. Oh yeah, you doing good? Yo, it's my. When it ends, you can have it back. Feels good. Talk to some Charger fans. Man, are we lucky to have the one and only. All right, guys, we are back with another Bolt Insight, and this week we have John Heston from Costa Mesa. What is going on, John? Not a whole lot. Just uh, uh, getting getting to talk Chargers, uh, tell you about some analytics work I've been doing. That's awesome. Yeah, so we've had you on a couple times in the past because you you know, you know do analytics for a living, and you also love the Chargers, so you bring that perfect marriage together and, uh, and get, find some really amazing things. So what did you do this time? What was the, the, the breakdown that you did to try and find, put all these numbers together and make some sense of the craziness that is, that is the NFL? Yeah. So but basically what I was uh, addressing with this like new analytics project was asking the question, is Tom Telesco a good drafter? And I've uh, noticed like online, you get sort of the opinions run the gamut. You see, see people saying, you know, he's a top tier drafter. Look at Derwin James, Joey Bosa, Justin Herbert. Um, and uh, other people will say, you know, he's just doing par for the course on the early rounds, like round one. And then he's abysmal after that. And you, you know, you could say he's only gotten Keenan Allen was like a day two pick, but beyond that, he hasn't really gotten any superstars. You could maybe say uh, Desmond King too. But um, basically what I kind of was thinking about is it sort of all boils down to expectations. Like what should you be expecting a GM to be doing with these picks? And so I had a project kind of addressing that. 
Awesome. So tell us a little bit about like how you got what you gathered to get this information because it sounds like it was pretty complicated. Yeah, basically what I did is I got uh, data from a pro football reference and I was looking at um, draft data. So the, the information I took is like, what year was the player drafted? What like what pick number were they? What position did they play? And then the thing that I was looking trying to correlate that with is this thing, a measure called approximate value, which is just kind of like how good was that player? So it takes into like how many starts do they have, how many tackles do they have if they're the defensive player, like all the stuff, did they get like an all pro pro bowl, all the stuff. And it just tells you like uh, approximate value or AV. It's just like, how good is that player? Gotcha. So well, let's, let's jump into it. So like in terms of like the Telesco draft, process and the the years we've had him where does he rank where does he yeah. rank in terms of how he's done versus the people that are homers for telesco and people that are like yeah, you got to get rid of him like where does he land yeah well so basically what I, I did is like i put everything into this uh, model called machine learning where it's like starts um you know you look at the 31 other teams and you see how well Telesco did. Uh, like basically you set up expectations, like what should he have gotten in terms of value with these picks? And there's two different models. One is like, how much value did he get? But like how much value did those players get with the team that drafted him? So with the chargers versus how much did they get regardless of the team? And so those give actually two slightly different uh, answers. So if you look at the one that uh, looks at just how much value gets like for the chargers, he is, he's actually a bit above average. So he ranks uh 10th overall. He's like the 10th best drafter. But if you look at the model, which looks at their t- entire career, he's 18th. So it's kind of like average plus or minus, you know, five or six, you know, so he's, he's kind of like, uh, in the middle of the road, but depends on which model you use. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So he's like middle of the ground, middle of the road versus like, you know, one of the better drafters you could say in terms of the value that he's getting in certain areas. And is that, is that, is that more recently he's gotten better or is that like his first couple of years brought his average down? Um, so that's actually a good point. So basically what uh, I found is, yeah, he, when you look at like what he's doing relative to expectation, his 2013 one was good. 2014 one was bad. 2015 one was pretty good. And it was kind of flip-flopping actually, uh, w- w- just with regards to your question, the 2014 one, the model rates as like the worst draft by any team over the 2013 to 2020 span. Ooh. So that one's really tanking his value. But, um, one trend I have noticed besides the sort of flip-flopping is that just overall things to be, seem to be trending upwards. So like, you know, 2020, it actually liked a lot just because, you know, he nailed the Justin Herbert pick. Oh yeah. 2019, it wasn't so hot on, but it also didn't think it was like a bad draft in 2018. It thought was pretty good. 2017, it, it actually considered his best draft. So like, even though there's like kind of this oscillation, like good, bad, good, bad, it's trending upwards, which is a good sign. So then let's, let's just jump into it. So in terms of what you found, what does the number say for, in terms of like the best pick that he had? So the single best pick that he's had um, right now is actually Justin Herbert, just because of course, like <laughs> relative to what a model will expect a rookie quarterback to do, he, he just blew that out of the water. You know, the, the, he, Justin Herbert has the advantage is he only has one year sample size. So he's got to be blowing it out of the water every year um, for that sort of a value above expectation to hold. But, um, some of the other ones you, uh, that did really well in the model are the guys you might expect, you know, Joey Bosa did really well. Um, but some of the ones are, you know, ones you maybe wouldn't think of. So the model really likes Sam Tevy, you know, getting a tackle in the sixth round who started basically every game of his rookie contract. That's pretty rare. And actually, if you yeah. check like the 2017 draft, he had like more value than anyone else in this, in the sixth round. So that's, he did a lot better than you'd expect. Um, a guy that you fans like, but maybe the model didn't like so much was uh, Derwin James. You know, he's really good yeah. when he's on the field, but you can't get value if you're not on the field. So the model thinks that he's been worse than you expect for, you know, the 17th overall pick in the 2018 draft. Um, but, you know, that, that one thing that should be noticed, these things can swing, especially with the younger guys. So like a good season for, from Derwin James could swing his value back up. Um, whereas, you know, some of the older guys, I think the value they've gotten is kind of set. That's interesting. Yeah. So it sounds like he's not blowing these drafts. It's just a matter of like health. And he, the big thing is like when you're drafting is to land like the guys in the first, second round, you can't miss on those guys like that. You you just can't do that. So yeah. was there anything on the data that showed like his, like how he does in those early rounds? Cause that's where you really start to build those like starters. 
Yeah. And I think this result maybe like isn't a surprise to anyone, but he does really well in the first round. So, you know, even when you know that you're supposed to get good players in the first round, he does like gets really good players in the first round, second and third rounds though. He's getting way below average. Um, and you, you know, that kind of matches up with what we've seen, you know, Forrest lamp, Dan Feeney, um, Mante Teo, they just haven't quite lived up to those um, billings. And then in the third round, he's getting kind of what you'd expect. So no better or worse. So it's really like he's a good uh, GM overall, or at least middle of the road, uh, you know, depending on how you look at it. But he's really getting there by being really good on day one, really bad on day two, and kind of middle of the road on day three. Got it. So um, kind of averages out. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So then we'll, then let's jump into it. I, we're the shamelessly positive guys, but what's been his worst pick? What's been the worst one that he's had so far? Yeah. So um, the basically uh, the one that, that the model liked the least was Max Turk. And so that didn't depend on what model it was because he got zero value because he didn't start a single game. He didn't start a game with any team. Um, so that was the pick that the model's just like, you got nothing out of it. And we expect a lot from a third rounder, sure. uh, especially in those positions. And, you know, centers are a pick that, you know, third round, you, you should get some value from. Awesome. Well, yeah, this is, this is all fascinating. And then just a general, just your thoughts. Like we haven't talked since before, you know, since the draft happened, what did you see in those first couple rounds? Do you like, do you, I know we can't, we don't have numbers for him yet, but your thoughts on those first couple rounds and the value we got. I mean, yeah, that's, uh, I think that they went after the right positions. So like, so I know, I know we don't like a PFF sometimes with their uh, Justin Herbert takes and everything, but basically they've done some interesting data analytics about the draft. And be, if you're not besides quarterback, um, the two positions that have like the sharpest drop off from like early to late are tackle and corner. So basically like you want to get tackle early. You want to get corner early. And I think that they got some really uh, good ones in, uh, you know, Rashawn Slater and uh, Santi Samuel Jr. Um, so I, I really like those picks, you know, d- day three, you know, there's always the Telesco curveballs, but I think some of the picks actually made more sense when you, when, once you st- stood back. I, so I really like the draft as a whole. I, I, I'm a bit worried about like secondary depth. It just seems really thin, you know, one guy goes down and we're starting like Brandon face on or something, but uh, I, I think it was a good draft. Um, awesome. And yeah, I, I think it, it matches up with what analytics would say is a pretty good draft. Awesome. Well, hey, man, it was great having you on. Thank you so much for taking the time and filling us in. And then uh, go ahead and remind people where they can go see all your breakdowns and, and you know, check in and all the stuff you've done. Sure. Uh, yeah, I have a website. It's mibpj.wordpress.com. And so I've got a handful of uh, analytics projects. I got a few more in the works. And so I'm sure I'll be on uh, when those are complete and I can talk about those. Well, and quickly, what, what were some of the ones you've done already? Just so people that haven't heard yeah, our so, earlier um, interviews. Yeah. So basically I was used, used to just post my stuff to Reddit. Um, so I had one that was like uh, about Tyrod and what to expect on him on third downs. I've got one, uh, actually a couple looking at like Justin Herbert regression, basically arguing against that PFS kind of got their numbers wrong when they are arguing that he's going to regress. Um, and then I had one that was just kind of looking at odds and ends of, uh, of Staley's defense. Like what are some weird quirks that I noticed about what he did with the Rams that we might see with the chargers. Awesome, man. Well, thank you again for coming on. Go check out his stuff. It's really, really fun to read and it kind of gives you a better insight on what's going on with the, with the number side of things. So thanks uh, so much for coming on, John. No problem. Thanks for having me. Well, there you go, folks. John from Coast to Mesa, our own personal analyst here at Charger Chat, stopping by to talk to us about Tom Telesco. John, we appreciate it so much. Thanks for stopping by. Um, and great bits of information there as far as, you know, the, the conversation on whether or not Tom Telesco stay or go. What do you do with him? Um, you got to be able to look at what it is that he's done and give him a grade of some kind. And so um, has it been, you know, all sunshine and roses? No. It, it hasn't. Obviously, we, he made it very well known that, you know, Tom has pretty much rested somewhere in the middle of the pact as far as drafting. Um, not the best, but certainly not the worst either. Um, but the I think the important thing to take away from that is we are trending in the right direction, which is what we want. And what it has felt like this entire offseason is that we are trending in the right direction um, as a, as a team and as an organization. So um, really great stuff uh, to hear. And obviously, Justin Herbert is the best pick. Obviously, Justin Herbert is the best pick. Um, so pretty, pretty awesome that uh, now we've got at least some numbers to back it up. Go check out John's website if you want to have something in your own back pocket to say, hey, you know what? 
Tom Telesco is mediocre, and I've got the numbers to prove it. So um, go check it out over at John's website. And now, folks, it's time to go on over to another segment. It's the one we've been doing every Friday. It's Coach's Classroom. Here we go. That's right, folks. It's time for another rendition of Coach's Classroom. And this week, we reach into the bag of questions. We had a lot of you uh, putting in questions for Ask Bolt Fam, some of you asking for the coach specifically. And we pulled out one from, uh, this is a new one, uh, Bolt Squad. Yeah. Like it. Hey, welcome to Coach's Classroom. Coach is going to take a look at your question and give you some visual uh, explanation. Uh, But your question goes a little something like this. How important is it that the Chargers bring back and utilize the fullback role more often, especially in the eye or low kneel formation to improve our running back and low ranking rush yards per game? All right. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, I I don't know, coach. (laughs) What do you got? (laughs) Yeah, it's a fun question because logically, when was our best? The best running game we ever had was with LaDainian Tomlinson, right? He broke all the records. MVP of the league, doing all those crazy things. And it was when we had Lorenzo Neal, we had this big offensive line and we ran the rock however many times a game. It was it was what we were known for. We had that style. Mm-hmm. Um, and so looking at m- making our run game increase, I think there's several things you can do. Obviously, like this question um, alludes to, you can change the uh, personnel and groupings and packages, um, or you become more more unique you become more well-rounded you don't you're not predictable and i think as charger fans that's that's the last thing we would ever want is to become predictable um so when you ask this question do i think that you're going to see more power i quote unquote 21 personnel formation 21 meaning two running backs usually you're running back your full back and one tight end two and one um i don't think that we'll see more of it um at, at the at the end of the day, what I hope is that we just use it more effectively. I think you will still continue to see it. That's why we kept Gabe Neighbors on the team. But you're not going to see Gabe Neighbors is not Lorenzo Neal. That he has a lot of different no skill sets. Is yeah, and, and it's not what you. That's not what we want. That's not what right. the NFL is anymore. Right? We don't want a big, humongous fullback that is a only a blocker. Mm-hmm. And and Lorenzo Neal would go out and catch a couple of passes here and there, but it was almost comical watching him try to fumble <laughs> down the field while holding the ball. Um, a fullback now is not that. A fullback is almost like a Derwin James of the offense. Hmm. You have to be able to play running back. You have to be able to play almost a tight end. Sometimes you'll be in a wing. You have to motion to be a distraction. There's a lot of different... You have to be able to play in that pass, but there's a lot of different things you have to do as a fullback. So it is a very difficult position to find, to find a good one. Um, so I look through some of the s- stats, just general in the NFL. Um, so 21 personnel, like I said, that means two running backs and one tight end, and you would have two wide receivers. So 21 personnel. Um, it was only used in 7% of snaps last year in the NFL. Hmm. Um, Chargers ha- used it about 9%. So we were above average in how much we used it. And it was only 9%. It was less than a 10th of the plays that we ran. Um, I, the Rams, um, the Rams didn't run it ever. So that's what, that's the, that's the kind of coach system that we came from. Hmm. Um, San Francisco, 33% of the time, Green Bay, 14% of the time. Um, but in the NFL, 11 personnel is the most highly utilized package that you're going to see. So when you go yeah. watch a charger game, you watch the NFL, 11 personnel is what you're going to see meaning one running back, one tight end, and three wide receivers. So I, that that's just status quo. That's what the NFL is now. We're mm-hmm. not going to – you're not going to all of a sudden, this new coaching staff, you're going to see a lot of fullback play. Um, because why does it still get used in, right? So the question is, if, if, if it's not – if it's not the way the NFL is, why do you even have it? Why do you even carry a fullback on the roster? Um, I do think at times that matchup is is necessary, right? You, you're you into the game, running down the clock. You need to be able to control the ball and, and get time off the clock mm-hmm. and, and do it effectively, not just run, 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 punt, as we have been terrorized by. You need to effectively <laughs> be able to do it. Um, and we've talked about this in the past. The NFL is all about matchups. You're just trying to create better matchups than the other team has. So if we have bigger, stronger guys and our fullback going in there is bigger and stronger than the linebacker that they're going to replace 
linebacker that they're going to bring in because of that, then let's do it. But if it's not going to, if the matchups don't create favorable, um, a favorable outlook for us, then don't do it. Don't ever run it. If we're not that team, if that's not our identity, then I don't want to do it because that's, that's what, that's what this offense is. I mean, you look at the teams that do it effectively, that run the ball out like all the time, the Ravens, 21 personnel, they ran 18% of the times. You knew it was coming and you still couldn't stop it. That's the kind of team that they are. New England, they had the highest rate. They ran 21 personnel 37% of the time. But you look at what they were trying to do, the quarterback they had, the style of team that they were, that's not us. Mm -hmm. So don't expect us to be running this personnel a lot, but at times it's necessary. So having a guy like a Gabe neighbor is obviously also a big special teamer, but he can create mismatches as long as you use it effectively and scatter it, sprinkle it in like Gabe does um, that protein powder to all of Justin Herbert's food. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> good callback. Good wow, callback. That was a good one, coach. He just needs to be sprinkled in. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we've talked about how it, it, NFL is all about matchups, right? So when we bring in big bodies, I want to look at some of these, these clips. When we bring in body, big bodies, so do they. So all, again, as we discussed last week, we like we like to watch it from behind. So that's right, we do, let's baby. Take it back over. <laughs> it's my favorite. A little bit later in the clip here, so <laughs> you can see the box here. You see the big bodies. So we have a tight end here, another tight end here. You have your fullback and your running back. So what personnel numbers wise would this be, Kevin? Good quiz. So you have two running backs, two tight ends. Uh, twenty one. Close twenty two. Yeah, 22. there you go. Twenty two. Is, is he off the line of scrimmage? Is the question. So, yeah, so he's like a wing, but that's still a tight end personnel. So they're going to match up, not necessarily where he lines up. They're going to bring on their guys, what players they have on the field based on what players we have on the field. So they know 86 is a tight end. That's Hunter Henry. They're going to bring on a strong safety or a linebacker. They're not going to have a nickel in. Um, So this is 22 personnel. So you have two running backs, two tight ends, and then you'll have one wide receiver. That makes up your five eligible guys like we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because of that, now they have big bodies. Look at all these 47s, 55s, 53s, 40s, 58s. They brought their big boy package in. So they're trying to go, you bring in big guys, we're going to bring in big guys. So this is this is all about how the NFL, I just wanted to show you that this is the way that those matchups kind of work. Um, a fun thing to watch is watch as we as this play develops. Um we can see the usage of shifts. We can use, okay, so they came on, they came out real big. So, okay, so now Hunter Henry is going to shift over. They saw something that they liked. Here's what it is. This play ends up being a pass to Justin Jackson out of the backfield. What they did was they flipped the play, and is at least what I think, I don't know for sure, but they flipped the play. They don't want Justin Jackson to run his route to this side of the field. Because 29 is sitting over here. This is all just looking at matchups. 29 is more of a DB type body, right? Mm -hmm. So he's going to be able to run with Jackson, Justin Jackson a little bit better. So they flip tight in. Now they're running it to this side. So in pass responsibility, it's probably 40 that's going to be in the flat running with Justin Jackson. That's more of a linebacker, big body type. So you're wanting to create these mashups and they do it in all these different ways. So as we watch the play develop, you'll see they, okay, as soon as we line up with big personnel, they have big personnel. Perfect. We're going to run the play that we designed that we knew they'd do this. We'll run a pass. We now move the play or flipped it so that way we can run it at 40 and we can get what we want. You get the matchup you want. Hunter's out there blocking it off. You pick up seven, eight yards, nice. right? Yeah. So it's a good, successful play. We saw what they did with personnel and we, had a, we, we were able to um, match that. And then this next play that I wanted to look at um, it gives you a little bit of a different look. That that one is it's showing you exactly what matchups are. So now our coaches have seen it. Um, after this first series and the next series that comes up, we run that same personnel package again. What was it, Kevin? What number? 22. Perfect. 22 Utah. personnel. <laughs> Give me 22. <laughs> so right here, you see, we now we're in 21 personnel, but we still went big. So 21 personnel, you have one, we have one running back. You got your Gabe neighbors right here in the backfield and Hunter Henry lined up on the right. Okay. So now the only difference on what they did on 22 versus 21 is they are a little bit lighter. Okay. So what the one difference that they make between when that first play that we looked at was 22 personnel. Now we're in 21 personnel. 
They have number 41 here that's a little bit more of um, a lighter body, probably able to run a little bit more. Then they had on 22 personnel, they had number 58, who was a big body, hand in the ground, more of a run-stopping kind of guy. So you can see that even as you adjust one guy on the field, the defense is going to adjust that one guy as well to make sure that they have all of those correct matchups. But as you can see now, Chargers go, okay, we like this matchup a little bit more against the run. So as this play develops, you'll see it does create, it, it creates a, a benefit for us. So what they do is, again, they flip the strength. What that does now is, look, you're looking at personnel, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're work instead of running the ball to this side where you got big boys over here, now we flipped it and we're running at 40 and 41, two lighter bodies that we think that we're going to be able to beat with this tandem of Gabe and our left tackle tight end. Mm -hmm. And as you watch it, it, it is. It's extremely effective because we have the matchups that we wanted. Gabe comes through, we get six yards. Boom, perfect. And it switches it up. It creates enough, enough difference um, in what we're doing just to sprinkle it in, as I said. Um, here's the thing. As we watch these games, those two plays were not big, exciting plays, right? Right. But they were both extremely effective. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a look early in the game as to what they're going to do when you run these plays in the fourth quarter with the lead. You know what personnel they're going to bring on. So early in the game, if you sprinkle this in, you go, okay, when we went 22 personnel, here's who they brought out. Not a great matchup for this, that, and the other that we would want to run. But when we go 21, they leave this guy on the field. So when we're in fourth quarter, we're up by 10, and we want to run the clock out, let's go to this, and these are the plays we like. So all of that stuff is kind of going on behind the scenes. So as a fan, don't get pissed off <laughs> if you see – these big, heavy packages early in the game. Like I said, as a fan watching this, I just want to make sure that it's not so um, predictable and you know what's coming. Right. Just running a play to, to kill a play. Um, and I think that, on all honesty, those two plays were the only two times that we ran 21 here early in the game or 22. And they were both effective plays. You got what you want done. You got to see the what their matchups are going to be. You made an effective couple of yards here and there. And you can kind of piggy bank that information for later on. So 20, 21 personnel or Gabe neighbors is not, not going to have an increased role. I don't think, but he still will have a role. Um, Justin Herbert is the offense, right? That's where everything goes through. Mm -hmm. He's too dynamic to just go, Hey, we're going to run 21. He's going to run the ball 50, 60 times a game. We are not the Ravens. Uh, we're not the new England Patriots. We have a guy that's going to sling the rock a lot. So uh, 21 personnel is not conducive to getting the ball down the field. Gotcha. So quick question. So it's basically a chess match where you're you're establishing some of these plays to see what personnel the other team brings out. At halftime, good defenses change that up on you. So if you bring out that again, there's a different wrinkle to it. Or is it is that what we didn't do last year uh, on defense? Yeah, potentially. It depends on how bad you beat them up. Right. So if you run 22 or 21 personnel and you get big chunks and you're just grinding it down the right at them and and that's what that's what coaches do. Like for instance, when I when I would go at halftime, I would look. Okay, what plays did we struggle against? What formations were giving us a really hard time? Let's make those adjustments. Um, you don't have time to make these gigantic overhaul of everything. Now you're going to get little wrinkles here and there, especially based on situation. Right, the defense knows that you're trying to run the clock out. Um, they're going to put in bigger bodies, so you're probably not going to get exactly what you saw in the first quarter. Uh, but at least it gives you an awareness of what their strategy was coming into the game. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you, Kyle, the coach, Duggan, for answering uh, Bolt Squad's question. Bolt Squad, I hope you got the right answer that you were looking for because uh, that's what you got. You got what <laughs> coach is going to give you. So um, <laughs> it's an interesting look, especially considering uh, the amount of analytics uh, that you looked at as far as around the league and what kind of uh, teams run those kind of packages. So, um, you know, we don't know what to expect for this upcoming season with Brandon Staley at the helm. Um, we might see some things that we just have never seen before as Charger fans, or at least not not lately. So um, expect the unexpected, folks. But uh, thank you, Coach, for taking a look. There you go, folks. Another Coach's Classroom done, breaking down the fullback situation. Uh, we have certainly feel like we've got a good one in Gabe Neighbors, but uh, probably best utilized uh, sparingly, but effectively. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you don't want to inundate your recipe with, too much of a certain spice. You want it just, just enough to be there, to be present, to be known, and used effectively. So 
Great breakdown, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, and that's pretty much going to do it for us here at Charge and Chef. Before we go, we wanted to make mention about our winners uh, from this last episode as far as who's going to be getting a free copy of the Shock Therapy magazine. Uh, our three winners are Zach Marincic, Daniel Llewellyn, and Bolt Squad. Congratulations, you guys. You have all won a free magazine, free copy, physical copy of the Shock Therapy magazine. We'll be getting those out to you too sweet, as we like to say here at Charger Chet. Uh, so everybody, round of applause, and thank you all for entering into that drawing because it, it really, when it's the off season, you know, there there's a definite lull. A lull can be felt across the entire league. And blessedly, the Chargers have not been in a situation where we've had to talk about anybody carrying Uzis or uh, being arrested or anything like that. So having you guys out there to chat with us and talk with us and send in those questions makes our day like that really makes the episode so we really have a lot of fun with that thank you to everybody that entered um and also don't forget to go check out the website chargerchat.com um we've created a members section within charger chat so you know it, it's a easier way for us to communicate with you guys um and it's a good place for everybody just to hang out we're all there uh everybody from charger chat is already signed up and logged in um and we'll be reaching out to some of you guys in the members as far as coming on for like fan focuses in the future, um, any other particular contests that we might have. Uh, we'll all be going through Charger Chat. We'll obviously make mention of it on Twitter and other social media outlets, but go to chargerchat.com, sign up for the members only section, and, uh, and, and it's free. It's free, folks. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? So I think that's going to do it for us here, folks, at Charger Chat. Folks, don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad. Any place. I love you, bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hey, buddy, how's your number crunching skills? Need to beef up the brain? Then get your butt down to John's Number Crunch Gym. Tired of not having the data to back up your wild claims? Then John's Number Crunch Gym is the place to go. Scale the graphs, lift the pie charts, and don't forget to carry the one. John's Number Crunch Gym. No PFF allowed.